downtown Daniel here again. This time we're at the second level of Thorns inside of Jackson and Connor men's clothing store. We have the owner here who is one of our new proud supporters uh, for our homeless veterans program and our Feed the Needy on the streets. I'd like for him to give a word of what prompted him to step up to the plate and take an active role in our situation. I'm Will Rideau. I'm the new owner of Jackson and Connor in uh, Thorns Marketplace. We just care a lot about the homeless in the area uh, in particular and also for our veterans who have served and uh, sacrificed, given us so much. It's really important that we take care of them, take care of the people who have given us so much. And as I've said before to all of you folks out there listening, that's the Tuskegee Airmen's Homeless Veterans Fund. Uh, you can send any donation to the People's Bank, Hoyoke, Mass, 01040, simply listed as Tuskegee Airmen, and it'll go right into the fund. God bless all of you out there, and thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think that we all have a duty to help people who uh, are down and um, help them pick themselves up and move on and have a better life. And we appreciate your concern. Thank you. We're here at Joe Ryan uh, Imported Auto Repair. Joe and I go back to day one grammar school, and he knew my dad. And he's a, one of our first supporters here, feeding the homeless, getting the homeless veterans into housing. Hi, my name is Joe Ryan, and uh, I grew up in Hoyoke with Danny, and uh, I knew his family from Smith's Ferry, and uh, I knew his dad. and. Um, we went to school together, um, and I'm trying to do what I can for the vets and supporting, uh, the homeless and the vets and, uh, you know, I've been in Northampton here for 36 years and, uh, I've watched plenty of changes in Northampton, but I've always been able to try and do my best to, to help the area, so. And you've seen the homeless, I mean, there were oh, not yeah. anywhere near as many homeless no. years ago. I mean, it, isn't it just growing? It seems oh, yeah. year after yeah. year, there's more and more. Yes, so. Well, we appreciate your support. support. We really yeah. do bless you. Okay. Hi, would you like to give us your name? I'm Joe Bass. Yes, and um, okay. what brings you here today? Uh, what are your thoughts about the events of today? Well, we're doing a benefit for homeless veterans, and, and uh, I'm a veteran myself. I'm a, a Vietnam-era veteran, and uh, we really need help. So that's why I came here to play some music that I wrote, and I hope it helps the cause. Help the vets. If you see one in trouble, do what you can for him, please, or her. Thank you. God bless America. I'm Joe Bass, street player in Northampton. Here's a little tune I wrote for Ruth Ann. Twenty-four-seven is when I think of you. A little piece of heaven. When my day is through And when you come to me I hope you will find A little piece of heaven In these arms of mine Can't live without you How you know that is true A little piece of heaven Is wrapped up in I long for your kisses in the middle of the night And dream of your sweet touch and holding you tight You came into my life from out of the blue And now I just can't stop thinking of you Now don't ever leave me I need your sweet love, my precious angel from heaven above. Now 
now when you come home at the end of the day there is one thing that I've got to say I'm thanking the heaven the man up above for this little piece of heaven our special Hi, good afternoon. Can you please uh, start off by uh, giving me your name? Sure, I'm Bishop Doug Fisher of the Diocese of Western Massachusetts, the Episcopal Diocese. Uh, good day, Bishop. My question to you is, um, what are your thoughts about today, and uh, do you have any comments that you would like to, um, to add? Sure. Well, I'm just here to, uh, to support Danny and his work, but also as a bigger picture to support ministry to our veterans. Um, in our diocese, our church, we've really committed ourselves to work with the veterans because it's similar to Matthew 25, where we're told, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was sick, you visited me. I think we can add to that. When I came home from war, when I came home from service to my country, you were there for me. And I think it's a real crisis in our country right now, the way, uh, the ve way veterans are unemployed, the way they're treated. And um, we would like, really like to be there for them. Um, one of the ways that we're attempting to do that is right here in Northampton. We have the Cathedral in the Night, and we know that a number of veterans go to Cathedral in the Night. And um, we're going to have a, an afternoon each week where we have lunch for veterans, uh, in which, again, we give them some nourishing food, but also have conversation about what their lives are like and um, what their needs are and how churches and social services might be able to, to be there for them. Welcome to Cathedral in the Night. So, at the welcome of and repeat three times. So the first time we say, God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. That's number one. Now comes number two. God is good all the time. Wonderful. All the time. God is good. Oh, you're so special. And here we have number three. <laughs> God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Welcome. Thank you so much for all you do. Come to do the word. Come, brothers and sisters. And we'll worship God together. Come to experience comfort. Come to experience challenge. Come, brothers and sisters. Let us worship God together. Come to find cost. Come to find joy. Come, brothers and sisters. Let us worship God together. Come to find humanity. Come to find community. Come, brothers and sisters. Come to find church. Come to find God. Come, brothers and sisters. Amen. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom of the Lord. Amen. 
said to his father, Father, I want right now what's coming to me. So the father divided property between them. It wasn't long before the younger son packed his bags and left for a distant country. There, he wasted everything he had. After he had gone through all of his money, there was a bad famine through the country, and he began to hurt. He saw it signed on with a farmer who assigned him to the fields to slop the pigs. He was so hungry he would have eaten the corn cobs in the pig slop but no one would give him any. That brought him to his senses. He said, all those farmhands working for my father sit down to three meals a day, and here I am starving to death. I'm going to go back to my father and say, I've sinned against God and you. I don't deserve to be your son. Take me on as a servant. So he got up and went home to his father. All right, now pay attention to this part. When he was still a long way off, his father saw him, his heart pounding. He ran out, embraced him, and kissed him. The son started his speech. Father, I've sinned against God. I've sinned against you. I don't deserve to be called your son. But the father wasn't listening. He was calling to the servants. Quick, bring a clean set of clothes and dress him well. Put the family ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Then get a cow and roast it. We're going to feast. We're going to have a wonderful time. My son is here, given up for dead and now alive and they began to have a wonderful time. The older brother stalked off in an angry sulk and refused to join in. His father came out and tried to talk to him, but he wouldn't listen. The son said, look how many years I've stayed here serving you, never giving you one moment of grief, but have you ever thrown me a party? This son of yours has thrown away your money and you go all out with a feast. His father then said, son, you don't understand. You're with me all the time and everything that I have is already yours but this is a wonderful time to celebrate. Your brother was dead and now he's alive. So many people focus on this story with either the older son or the younger son. The younger son, the fact that he asked for an inheritance was a really big deal, especially in this culture, because to ask for someone's inheritance was to say you basically wish they were dead. And then he went and wasted it all. And then for the older son, he was really upset because he felt like he'd been doing everything right. and he was the one who didn't get a party. The younger son who screwed up was the one who got the party. Um, so really, the focus of this story is the father, but the way that that becomes clear to us is when you look at, well, why did Jesus tell it in the first place? And if you look a little bit ahead in this passage, you'll see that actually what was going on was that Jesus was hanging out with tax collectors, prostitutes, and some other people that in that society would have been considered the lowest of the low. And then these religious leaders, the Pharisees, came by, and they got really upset. They couldn't understand why would Jesus hang out with people like this? Why would he show love to people like this? And so he tells this story as a response to explain how God feels about these people. So um, what we see about the father in this story is that first, even when his son asked for the money, he gave it to him. Now, he didn't have to do that, but he loved his son enough to give him his own choice. And then after squandering it all and the son comes back, he could have easily said, oh, you know, I, you know I'm not going to forgive you. You kind of messed up too big this time. Or he could have said, all right, you can come on as my servant. But he could have given him a lecture or something like that. But he didn't. He looked at his son and he, the real key is in verse 20 when it says, while he was still a long way off. And what this means is that the father hadn't just moved on with his life. He wasn't in his house giving up on his son. He was standing at the road waiting, hoping that one day his son would return because he longed to have that relationship with him. And then what it says is that when he saw him, he ran to him and kissed him. And this was totally against the culture. Like you would never have had a grown man running down the, ro down the road, ropes flying, sandals kicking up dust. It just wouldn't have happened. And so the fact that he did it shows that he threw off all ceremony to show how much he loved his son. And it, the word that is used for, for embraced him is kataphilo in Greek, and this implies fervent affection, fervent affection. So he didn't just give him a hug and say, all right, well, I guess you learned your lesson. 
he totally forgave him, totally embraced him. It was extravagant love. Um, so then he not only forgave him, he showered him with gifts. And if you haven't guessed it by now, the father in this story is meant to represent God. Throughout the Bible, God calls himself a lot of different names, um, but the word that he uses most often to describe himself is Abba, which means father in Hebrew, and actually it means daddy. It's a very intimate form of affection. It, it demonstrates an affectionate relationship. Um, so the God of the universe could have chosen any sort of like high and mighty name, but he didn't. He chose to be called father. And um, what this story shows us is you know, sometimes for myself, I think that I'm on a ladder. Like, if I do enough good things, I'm like that older son, that I'll get the father to like me. I'll get in God's good graces, I'll get brownie points, and I'll be liked. Um, and this story shows us that's not true. And sometimes, like the younger son, I think I've screwed up too much for God to like me. But we also learned that that is not possible. So, sometimes, um, like the older son, or the younger son, um, we feel like God might forgive us if we come and just accept our place as a servant, but he showers affection on us. And it says in Romans 5, 8, But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinning. So even in the moment that you did something you weren't proud of, the worst thing you can think of, that's when he loved you the most. And um, many times um, we feel like, uh, our good deeds will somehow get us closer to God, but really what that does is a disservice to us because if we think we can somehow win God's affection, then we're not free to live in just the beauty of the fact that it's a gift and that this extravagant love is given to us without any of our efforts. And so what we learn from this story and the phrase that I really want you guys to all hang on to today is that there is nothing we can do to make God love us more and there's nothing that we can do to make him love us less because he loves us not because of the good or bad things we do, but because he's our father. And so if you're on that ladder trying to win God's approval or feeling like you can't climb high enough, maybe it's time to step off of the ladder and realize that God has already come down for us and he's longing to embrace us. Um, so today as we go into prayer, I would just love you guys to think about that and realize that because God's your father, you can bring any request before him and he wants to hear it. And you can bring the good and the bad. Um, and so just, let me know, raise your hand if there's anything that we should pray for, and maybe we can get the board to a prayer request. Does anyone have any prayer requests or praises from this past week? Broken heart. Broken heart? Yeah. Yeah, so we lift that up. We lift up the broken heart. Oh, I'm sorry, Destiny. So Destiny um, says that she needs to go to the hospital for sur surgery. So God, we pray for healing and restoration in that. Um, and then one prayer request I remember while Becca's getting the board. Um, uh, a friend of ours, Sherman, passed away this week. Um, so we lift up all those who loved him. Um, we lift up God, uh, Eddie, Alfie. Um, for Kevin and all his health, we thank God, and for Kevin's daughter, we pray for her. Um, we pray for Andy of Florence, who passed away a few weeks ago now, and for his family and friends as well. And um, Lord, we lift up a prayer for B Bishop Joseph McGuire um, of Springfield, I think it is. Um, and we also bring Stephen and Julie and Ryan before you. And um, is there anyone else that we'd like to lift up in prayer? Or anything else? All the suffering people in the world. Okay. And all the suffering people in the world. Um, so, Lord, we bring those prayer requests before you, and um, we thank you that you're a God who um, is our Father and loves to answer our prayers. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Tyler, good job. Pardon me. Thanks, Daniel. Here and having other people coming on Monday. 